Good morning, everyone, and welcome back um, uh, to the public hearings of the uh, TRRC. Imam, you have the floor if you can offer some prayers, please. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله هادينا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هادينا الله الأول والآخر والزاخر والباطن يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبهي وجلال وجهك وعزيما سلطانك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد خاتم النبيين وإمام المرسلين ربنا عطينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يزفون والسلام على المسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا الله شكرا إمام جالو بشاب كما هاب دا فلو بليز Thank you chairman Lord God of mercy of grace of love and of divine compassion the one who creates all humankind throughout the whole world in your image and in your likeness we continue to ask that your Holy Spirit will be with each and every one of us. God, and direct us to lead our lives in the way that you want us to live. And we continue to pray for the TRRC sitting, and we pray for all of the witnesses that will appear before this commission, that you will grant them the boldness to be able to come here and speak the truth. And grant the commission also the designing spirit to design between truth and falsehood. Grant the general populace and those that are abroad patience to be able to see through the end of the process. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, um, Bishop Odeko. Uh, Council, if we're ready with this morning's witness, you may proceed. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, and members of the audience. Uh, we're ready to proceed, and Mrs. Hadidan Njai Jabi would lead this witness. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Mr. Usher, can the witness be ushered in, please? Aye, Dr. Malik Njai. Aye, Dr. Malik Njai. Do swear that. Do swear that. I'll speak the truth. I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Witness. Good morning. Thank you for coming before the TRRC today to testify. Thank you. We have already met and you know who I am, but for the records, my name is Hadi Dande Jabi, mm -hmm. and I will be guiding you through your testimony before the Commission today. Thank you. We shall discuss the following issues before the Commission. Your educational background, your work experience and profession, your arrest, detention and release, the visit of the then President Yai Jame to the RVH in 2007, the cabinet meeting that was held by the then President Yai Jame declaring that he had a cure for HIV AIDS, your knowledge on HIV and AIDS, also your role in the presidential alternative treatment, and whether the President had a cure for HIV AIDS. 
after those discussions, I shall then hand you over to the chair and the commissioners for any questions they may have for you. And you shall also be given the opportunity to give any closing remarks you may have and also recommendations you may have. Are you comfortable and ready to proceed? Yes, ma'am. Please, if you're also comfortable, you may remove your mask as you're sitting alone and nobody's near you. Thank you. Can you please state your names for the commission? Um, Malik Samaramjai. Are you known by any other names? Pachar Boy. At this point, Mr. Chair, I'm not sure whether we'll want to do any interpretation in a local language for the audience that are listening on air. Um, if we may do a wall of interpretation. Doctor, at this point, we shall be doing an interpretation in Wolof, so you will have to give at least three seconds between my questions and your answers so the interpreters can interpret. Thank you. Thank you. We may continue. Can you state of date, your date of birth for the commission and your address? I was born in Banjo, 29 September 1958. I live at Cape Point. I live at Cape Point. September 1958. Uh, Sorry, just to make you comfortable, to let you know, the interpreters actually sit in a boot behind you. That's so you will sister. only hear their voices. That's my sister. Thank you. Can you tell the commission about your educational background? Uh, commission, I started at um, Albion Primary School. Primary School. Where I did two years. And then I moved on to St. Mary's Primary School. Where I did four years. Took the common entrance. And then went to Gambia High School. Gambia High School. Five years after I did my O levels. Then proceeded to the sixth form. Two years later we did our A levels. And thereafter we proceeded to university. I went to University of Nigeria Nusuka. University of Nigeria Yange. Studied medicine. Sorry, Dr. Nya, is it correct to say that you did your O levels in 1975 and your A levels in 1977? Correct. Dr. Munawa, 1975, you did O levels, but you did A levels in 1977. Correct. And that it was in the year 1977 that you proceeded to Nigeria, is that correct? Correct. In 1977, you did O levels in Nigeria. Can you continue to tell us about your educational background when you got to Nigeria? I graduated from the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital um, 1984. Then I proceeded to the University of Lagos Teaching Hospital. Where I did a one-year house job. But um, uh, at the same time, I was recruited in the Gambia National Army. Where I was recruited in the Gambia National Army. 
Can you when tell I, the commission what was your role in the Gambia National Army then? When I was commission, I was a commissioner the Gambia National Army, the Gambia National Army. At that point in time, I was just an officer of the army, but I was in the process of completing my housemanship. Jamano Bobu Nak, Mangi Nekonrek, Officer Amaguma won Ben Mahama, while Betty Mangi continued the defling Hamnemo Ligabi Madif Jibir. When I finished the house job, I came back home. Bama Pare Nak Ligay Bobu, La Nibisuat Nak Chikir Reumifi, and reported for service. Chila Daldinuna, Purkuma Sepur Ligayfi, at the Yundum Barracks. Yubumanak, Yundum Barracks. And I was immediately sent to to England. I went to the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. Madam Chijango Binowa Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. For my basic officer training program. Doctor, can you tell us what year this was? But Dr. Wanyu, what was that? This was in 1985. Lolo Atum 1985, Lawan. When I finished the officer training program, Bama Pare Nag Nyanga Momoga Hamne Momla Dondef. I completed the the officer training program comprised of three components. Nyanga Menak Nyati Fanala. The basic military program, which was done at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. Royal Military Academy, Diploma in Tropical Medicine. Diploma in Tropical Medicine, which was done at the Royal Army Medical Corps headquarters in London. Bobunang manko defe won ci Angleterre ci Royal Army Medical Hospital ba. And the third one was the medical training for military officers which we did at Aldershot. Eh ñetteli ñanga mi nak moy ni nga xamne mom la ñoo jangé wali fajum soldat yi té lool ñu ngi ko defone ci Aldershot. Thereafter I came back home. Gannaaw lool yépp nak ci la ñi bissi in 85 in 1985 and started work ma commencé nak liggéey as a captain man ñu jox ma maxama captain in the gambian army eh ci gambian army bi the workload in the army was not much at the time jamono bobu nak liggéey bi nga xamné mo nekkon ci buntu soldat bi fi ci rew mi bari wut won lool we had just a battalion a battalion rek lañ fa amone so i spent most of my my free time working as a medical officer in the Royal Victoria Hospital. Sorry, Dr. Njai, can you tell us at that time what type of medicine you were practicing? Dr. Njai, what do you want to do? 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 General medicine. In the hospital, I was in the department of surgery with Dr. Ori Jones. Che lopetan minang mang one chief fan na binga hamne nyoe de huali operate man ma Dr. Jones. And Dr. Sulanke. Ag don Dr. Sulanke. And at that time, jamano boba nak. We were so few that. Uh, if you are in surgery, you cover obstetrics and gynecology. If you are in medicine, you cover pediatrics. And this was the time when you'll find two, only two doctors on call in the hospital. We, we were doing things like one in three. Every three days you'll sleep in the hospital. I maintained doing this until 1993. When I went to Nigeria, <coughs> For a one-year course at the Command and Staff College, Georgia. Chief, I know Command and Staff College. 
this was the the course that prepared all officers bi nak ñangala bo xamne da fa wajal ñi nga xamne ñoy soldats yi to be able to assume the responsibility of command at brigade level e pour nga gaddu nak tambali gaddu liggey bi nga xamne moy jité ci fan ak ñoo wax brigade level thank you dr njay so it was one Njai. year you returned in 1994 is yes. that correct ben at nga fa defone nga del ci 1994 ndax non la demé non la demé can you tell this commission if anything happened upon your return to the gambia mu nga wax commission bi si fekke ne amul dara li xew ba nga ñepp ci i came back on the 19th ma ngi ñew fukki fan ak juroom ñenen ci wéru july and on friday 22nd be ci ajuma la won ñaar fukki fan ak ñaar the coup took place ci la coup d'etat bi am can you tell the commission what coup d'etat you are referring to mu nga wax commission bi ban coup d'etat ngay wax nonu i'm talking about the yaa jamele coup d'etat ma nga wax mbiri yaa jamme coup d'etat bo nga xamne mom la jité won thank you you may continue mu nga continue and on 25th monday ñaar fukki fan ya ak juroom muy bessi londi i was arrested ñu nañ ma japp and detained at mile to prison dal di ma yobbu nak ci mile to prison were you given any reasons for your arrest and detention wax nañ la dara ne li nga def motax ñu la japp up to today no da tay jiñ tollu ne de de waxuñ mako how long were you detained for ñata waxtu ci dir waxtu bi nga def ci kasso bi ñata waxtu la won i was detained for 18 months ñu ma fa jappon lu tollu ci at ak juroom benn wër can you tell the commission where you were detained nga wax commission bi ban fana ci kasso bi lañ la tiye won we were taken to what they call confinement number 1 ñu ñu yobbu won ci bëre bi nga xamne ca kasso ba la nek way ñu ko oyé confinement number 1 it was a special area in the prisons bëre bu la bo xamne rek dañ ko jaklel fofu ca prison ba horrible place dr njay are you referring to mile two prisons mile two kasso bi ngay wax nonu de wa mom lay wax is it also correct to say that it was the security wing that you are referring to ngi melni dal fi nga wax nonu fofu la ñu oyé tamit di security wing yes wow fofu la Thank you. In your testimony I heard you say we were detained. Ci sa eh wax bi ma ngay dega ya ngay wax ñun. Yes. All the almost all the senior officers of the army. Wow, danaka dafa melni ñi nga xamne ñoy won khalifa yi jité won ci walu soldat bi yépp. Some senior officers of the gendarmerie. Khalifa yi nga xamne ñoy jité won ci walu gendarmerie bi. And uh, Inspector General Deputy Inspector General of Police Inspector General of Police ak ki topa ci kowam the director of the National Security Service director bi fi ñoo wax National Security Service and some others were all there ak ñeneen ñeneen ak ñeneen ñi papa nekkon Dr Ndia is it correct to say that you're actually referring to heads of departments and institutions in the previous regime before the coup d'etat mu ngi melni docteur ya ngay wax ñi nga xamone ñom ñoy won njit ci euh buntu liggey kay yi nekkon ci nekkon ci ngor gi bala coup d'etat bi we had we had the inspector general of police amon nañ fa inspector general bu police the deputy inspector general of police ak ka nga xamne mo topa ci kawam We had the Director General of the National Security Service. Amon nañ Director General bu National Security Service. We had senior officers Amon, of the army. Amon nañ ay khalifa yo xamne ñu ngi ci walu army bi. And senior officers of the gendarmerie. Ak ay khalifa yo xamne ñu ngi ci gendarmerie bi. And of course there were few junior officers like Lieutenant who is now a general today. amon nañu xamne tamit ñu ngi feto won maxama souf yi lieutenant yi ak yu ñew dal sorry doctor my question was what these persons that you're mentioning heads of institutions or departments of the previous regime before the coup d'etat mu ngi melni lima lacc ci won euh moy yi ñi nga wax nonu ñoy won njit yi nga xamne ño jité won ay buntu liggey kay yi nekko ci ngurga bala coup d'etat bi ña fa ñan ñi jité won buntu liggey kay ci euh ci ngurgi time bobu ñoy ngay wax nonu 
there were some who occupied such positions. There were, but there were also some who didn't occupy leadership positions. That's why I tried to name the heads and left the rest. But basically, the, the top echelon of the security service at the time were all in mile two prisons. But then it is correct to say that most of them were personnel of the previous regime. Yes, they were all serving in the government of Sadawda Jawara. Wow. Thank you. Can you name a few of the persons that you are referring to by name? Jerejev, Munganyo Limal Sifek and Barusa, Ninga Wah Nunu, Nga to Najoma Centuri. Pasala Jang. Pasala Jang. Inspector General of Police. Inspector General of Police. Ibrahim Chongan. Ibrahim Chongan. Deputy Inspector General of Police. More Deputy Inspector General of Police. Ture, Mr. Ture, I think Keva Ture. Mr. Turele Yakarna, Turbi Kevala. Director General of um, National Security Service. Don't know Director General, but National Security Service. And as per your statement, you mentioned Samsud, Samsudin Sar, Mamad Cham, etc. Is that correct? Achiwa Bitamid Wanga Turi, Samsudin Sar, and Mamad Cham, and Yenin. Yes, Samsudin Sar, Mamad Cham. They were company commanders in the National Army at the time. Samsidin Sar, Agmamad Cham, Yamanubu, company commander in one National Army. You further mentioned names such as Du Cham, Pasala Jeng, Sheriff Gomez, is that correct? Wahangatami Nimelni Du Cham, Pasala Jeng, and Sheriff Gomez, and Dah Nyonyo Tam Chilang Bokol. Yes. Wow. Ndurcham was in the engineering corps. Ndurcham was in the engineering corps. Lieutenant Gomez <coughs> at the time was the adjutant. Lieutenant Gomez, I don't know if you are the adjutant. Who was the third one you mentioned? Sheriff Gomez. That's Sheriff Gomez. Asala Jeng. Asala Jeng was the IG. Asala Jeng was the inspector general. And you also mentioned names as Sheriff Mbai and Babukar Jeng. What is Sheriff Mbai and Babukar Jeng? Sheriff Mbai was in the gendarmerie. Sheriff Mbai was in charge of the gendarmerie. He was in charge of the accounts department. He was a senior officer in that corps. RSM Jeng was the most senior soldier in the army. He was the RSM. RSM nak mo mo jite won soldari yep jamu. He was a regimental sergeant major. Mo won linyo wah regimental sergeant major. And you mentioned. Oh, Captain Johnson was there. Captain Johnson, okay. Captain Johnson, he was also in the companies, in the infantry companies. Captain Johnson, mo mitamit bo kon nacha. And in your statement and in your testimony, you said a keba ture. But the evidence we have received is a keba sise. Correct. We had the director of national security. I'm thinking of my director. Keba sise. National security. Wow. Keba sise. He was two cells away from me. Thank you. So to kind of summarize it for the commission, can you remember about how many of you were arrested and detained around that time? At one time, I counted 29. Amon na jaba no bo hamne na konte wana bem tolu chinyar fuka agdiro mnyent. And you were all detained for almost the 18 months you mentioned earlier. Nyom yen nyep nyung len bai wan chikasobi diri bena at agenawala. No, some were released early. 
dedet amon nañu xamne baye nañ len ñen nañu ben wër ñen nañ ñetti wër ñen nañ juroom ñetti wër i did 18 man nak attaque juroom ben wër la fa def and when i left i left the inspector general of police te bama fa baye ko ma nga fa baye inspector general of police and, and others in the at they did, did more than 18 months dem dañ fa sax lu upa fuk at ak juroom ben wër were you at any time tortured physically no mentally yes laaj ne ko na amna ben jamono bo xamne metital nañ ko mu ne dedet pou de ci metiti yaram la dedet waye nak ci wali helam wow can you explain further for this commission mun nga continuer waxal ñu lolu pour commission bi gën ko xam in the first place it was embarrassing we have junior officers arrest senior officers and lock them up in the prison that was not military cengel ben li lu ruslu la nga jël ñi nga xamne ño ay kilifa lañ ci wali soldat gi ak ño xamne dañ fété suuf nga tek leen ci prison bi lolu mom du mbiri soldat military discipline doesn't allow that pour yar soldat lolu nanguwuñ ko ci you can you can you can put someone on the house arrest mun nga jël kenn def ko ci ben neek bo xamne wata genn def fen within the military camp te da fa nek ci bir camp bi soldat yi but to arrest an officer and take him into a prison waye japp kilifa soldat tej ko ci kasso bi not military lool do meri soldat can you further tell the commission why you felt you were mentally tortured mun nga wa comme ça la li tax li nekkon na eh lo xamne gëtën na len ci seen xalaat ci seen xel i can highlight two incidents mun na wax ñaari xew xew the first one bu ñëk bi was when the junta came into the prisons moy jamono ji nga xame ne junta yi ñew nañ ci bir prison bi the whole junta with the exception of of yaya jamme junta bi yeb lu dut yaya jamme dr njay may you please tell us who you're referring to as the juntas dr njay wax ñu so ne junta ñan la won ñi 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 nekkon ci junta bi um the i'm talking about the governing council at the time ma ma nga wax ñi nga xamne ñoo nekkon ci council ba section of the chairman yaya jamme bem des chairman ba yaya jamme we saw gis nañ fa lieutenant sana sabali lieutenant sana sabali lieutenant saidibou haidara lieutenant saidibou haidara lieutenant yankouba touré lieutenant yankouba touré lieutenant P, uh, Lieutenant Singate. Ak Lieutenant Singate. Edward. Edward Singate. Together with Lieutenant Peter Singate. Ak it uh, Lieutenant Peter Singate. And all the security details that were assigned to these officers at the time. Ak it ñi nga xamne ñak ño len doon aar di anda ñom jamano booba. So they were a very good military contingent. Uh, mang melni dal mbolo mu uh, soldat bu takula won they came in yeah, bañ exe shouting ñu yuhu at all of us ñu ciow ci suñ kaw ñun ñep we are going to set an example on you people eh uh, nak yeen di nañ jeflante yeen lo xamne ñeneen di nañ ci jangé where is chongan ana chongan where is mamad betty ana mamad betty officers ñu xamne ay kilifa lañ senior to them ay kilifa yo xamne sax ñoo leen jité ci soldat bi but they started at the entrance and they picked out RSM Jeng waye nak ci buntu ba lañ ko commencer ñu daldi seppi RFM Jeng to better understand when you say they started from the entrance they actually came into the prisons of Mile 2 and entered to the security wing where you were detained so ne andi ci entre bi ci buntu bi dafa melni ñom dañ dugga ci kasso bi buntu bu mag bi ñu dugga ci ñew ba pare duggale ci security wing bi they came straight into where we were detained dañ ñew rek jubal fa nga xamne fofa lañ ñu tek so they picked out um RSM Jeng ñu daldi ci sepp RSM Jeng and gave him a merciless beating ñu daldi ko door door yu metti they kicked him we xanañ ko dr njay door nañ ko bopé fetel can you tell us what time this incident happened mën nga ñu wax ban waxtu la li xew 
Hmm. I think it was in September 6th. September. That year. At Moma. Okay. I may be wrong. As far as the date is concerned. Well, it's a fact. Happened. Dr. Njai, that is fine. I was looking more for the time of the incident itself. Did they come in the morning, at night, or in the evening? In the middle of the night, after midnight. We were all asleep. It was the racket of noise that they made that woke us all up. And the wailing of RSM Jeng. Because that was how we knew that one of us was being beaten. The setup of the confinement was such that you cannot see everywhere all the time. If you are in the entrance, you so, can see do, what's happening there, but you won't see what's happening where we were. But if you are in room 1, 2, 3, 4 of the entrance, you can see what's happening there, but you won't see what's happening where we were. You'll be able to see what's happening in the entrance and what's happening along the corridor. So where I was, cell number 13, cell number 13. I had Chongan opposite me, Chongan, and I had um, Mamat Cham. Next to Chongan. So everything that happened to these two, I saw. But I heard what happened to RSM Can you tell us what you saw? They brought the commissioner of prisons to open all those cells. They and the commissioner of prisons for Munyo Ubi cell. And when the cells were opened, they attacked. Sorry, doctor. Can you tell us who the commissioner of prisons was then? Doctor, munga nyo wa time bobo wala watu bobo kana ne kon commissioner of prisons? No. No, I can't. Did it, muno makowa. You may continue. Munga continue. And it was sad to watch what was happening. Fortunately, Singate stood right at my cell. I could grab him. I mean, I mean um, Edward Singate. Edward Singate. So I said to him, You know what you people are doing is. It's not correct. This is illegal. And you have no right to do it. And one day the world will hear the whole truth. And you'll be expected to explain. Well, he turned around, he looked at me. We had a relationship. In the army. And there was a lot of respect between us. He looked at me and he said, Sir, I'm sorry, we won't come back. And they never came back. Thank you, Dr. Njai. From the witnesses that have testified before this commission, she said they knew on fees, what the economic commission will they have made suggestion that the junta started the incident of that day with first Mama Cham, Mama Cham then Ibrahim Chongan, mm -hmm. Chongan, then RSM Jeng. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yes. Because as they were going out, they attacked 
RSM Jeng. Chilen Jaldi Songa, RSM Jeng. And at that point, they were shouting, Samsudin Sar, you are next. Tejamano Joji Nang, Nungdon Yu Huturi Samsudin Sar, Nako Yachi Topa. But at that point, we could not see what they were doing. Why, Jamano Boba Nang, Munu Yogis Lin Jondef. What they made clear to us was that um, they were going to set an example on these three. They were going, going to execute them. Mom Len Lera Chinun Dal Moy, then a Len Deflo Hamlen, then a Len Chijang, then a Len Devay. They took them out. You get Nelen Chibiti. And what I would call a mock execution took place. A Lima Wadal Nemoy, then Meloni, then you won in a rain and Len Feka de Funko. Can you explain why you're saying so? Because after after they got them out of the confinement area, they released a volley of shots, many. Anybody who understands fireworks from especially an AK-47 will believe that they had done what they said they were going to do. But where they were doing it was very close to my cell. It was actually behind the cell that was occupied by, by Chongan. So when the gunshots died down, I could hear Chongan's voice. He was wincing in pain. So I was convinced that even if he was shot, he wasn't dead. And they left. We all stayed in our cells, slept in the morning. We, we returned to our usual routine. When they opened the cells, we walked out to play draft. And I, I remember I targeted a prison officer, Sise. Sise was his name. So we played. Thank you, Dr. Njai. So in the next morning, did the juntas carry out as they had threatened by executing some of the detainees? Well, we, we were not sure as of that time. But whilst I was playing draft with Sisi, I asked him, I said to him, I heard Chongan's voice when the shots were down. So I don't think that he's dead. Where is he? Anam? We were there for a long time. We were there for a long We have been warned not to talk about it. You, you are will tell. They are not dead. They were not killed. They are in another confinement. Thank you. So you. further on in your statement, you also mentioned at some point Sana Sabali and um, Sadibu Haidara were also arrested and yes. brought into the security wing. Yes. 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 Wow. I remember one day I was in my cell reading a textbook of surgery. When Samsudin Sar shouted at me, Doc. Daldi Yuhu Sumaturne ma Doc. Gan Amna. Ne Amna Gande. What? Munima Sana Savali Akhaidara Nyungini Nyunglen Taka. That's what he, that's, that's the way he put it in, in Wolof. Basically, he said to me that he was observing Sana Savali and Haidara being dragged into the prisons. I remember Sana Savali and Haidara being dragged into the prisons. 
Can you tell us if they were brought in the cells where you all were detained? No. No, they, 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 they didn't do that. They did. What they did was they went to where our colleagues were. That's Chongan, RSM Jeng. Chongan, RSM Jeng. And uh, Captain Mama Chang, where they were. Uh, Captain they Mama removed Chang. them from that cell and brought them back. Where we were. And then they moved Savali Anko. And that also confirmed you our beliefs. Fa. That they were not dead. That the Junta was just playing a mind game with us. Which, which we were able to to understand within within a short time. Doctor Nya, apart from playing darts, as you mentioned earlier, can you tell this commission how you pass time in the mile two cells? Um, physical training. We insisted that we must be fit. Because at the time, we were thinking that if we have to fight, we have to be fit. Did you practice any yes. medicine in the prison? No, we didn't. I refused to deal with medical issues of the prisons. Because I used to tell the commissioner that as a detainee, if you want me to practice medicine, get me released. And so it was either we go out and play, like Chongan was the table tennis champion, and we always had a fight over the table tennis. And uh, and Lieutenant Gomez. Lieutenant Gomez. Who was basically a training wing product of the mom, army. Was responsible for our physical training. We used to move up to eight to ten kilometers of running around. The corridor. Thank you, Dr. Nyai. So you've made it clear that you did not practice any medicine in the prisons whilst you were detained. No, not really. Amongst our group. I used to give medical advice. I had no drugs, I had nothing, but I could write something and get it smuggled out. For, for, their, for their treatment in the hospital. Like we had uh, RSM Cheng, who was involved in a ghastly accident and had to be taken to UK. Uh, we had severe neurological problems that used to really disturb him. So after the session he had, he felt very, very bad when he came back. So I remember I wrote to the head of surgery and gave it to him to take to the head of surgery. And he was admitted in the hospital. He was there with Captain Johnson. Who was also involved in an accident. He could not survive in the prisons. In my medical opinion. So 
So we prevail on the commissioner of prisons to take them to the hospital, il and I gave them a note to give to the head of surgery, and they were admitted. Il a dit que le commissaire de prison ne ne lui est pas le pétan. Il a dit qu'il y a un acte bien d'aller bien à Kate Bohamne, mon encore il faut faire une dite là. And they serve their detention. Il a dit qu'un acte bien jamais on y a pas mis qu'il est bien tiré, bien bien. Thank you for that, doctor. Jere Jeff, doctor. During your 18 months detention. Did anyone of the detainees die in your presence? Chidir binga de fufu bena at agena wala. Ninga hamne nyone konsibir kaso bi nyin Japan sen group be amna kufade kubo hamne yegna ko. Wow. Yes. Wow yegna ko. Um, Sadi Buhaidara. Sadi Buhaidara. He died. Dena. I was there. Mang fawon. I saw him the day before he died. Just na ko bis balamo de. At one point, they wanted me to go to his cell to look at him medically. But I refused. I said I had no business with him. I'm detained here, he's detained there, and the prison is responsible. They should look after him. The following morning, Chonga and I were playing draft. Man, my Chonga, you mean a condi dummy? And this one was battlefield draft. Uh, li na gafu melni chitori he 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 had to win, and I also had to win. Man, mom da fa wara ganye, man tami da mawara na ganye. And everybody in our cell area knew that that was the fight that morning. Eh, nyu nyu chi isun cell be ak nyu nyu worip hamon na nyu hicho wante bo mo chwa nekon. So everybody came to watch. Nyu bi nyu na kufurse tani. Then they pulled. Hydera out of his cell. Chile njel di gine Hydera ki cell ambe. He saw us, his seniors, he stopped, he greeted us. Yes, na nyo mudal di taha u nuyo nyo. Then Chongan said to me, Dok, uyul. Chongan ne ma Dok, uyul. Mene ko hana danga banyo win la. Uyul ma ken, mune ma no, look at this dunyo officer. Mune ko di hol al nyi, madal di hol. When I looked at this man, I felt very bad. He had bloodshot eyes. Right. He was swollen. He looked very, very sick. In fact, if you ask Chongan, I told him, why do you want me to look at a dying man? So, Laje Chongan, Wahon Nakon, Kultanga Buga Mahol Nitko Hamnem Gedezi. So he left. Daldidem. A few hours later, they brought him back. I was to inew you in the watko. And we learned from the prison officers that they had taken him to see a doctor within the complex of the commissioner. Alin yege ti prison ni fali ge alin yu wahmoi den koyo bon ti bena doctor ba hamne mungi fufu. The following day. Alexa. They also wanted me to see him, and again I refused. Belege inu buga magisarko madal di bam tuwa rekne mabany. Then by midday. We had the shouting of the guards. And it was quite apparent to all of us. He must have died. Thank you. In the 18 months that you were detained, were you at any point allowed to have legal representation or a visit from a legal practitioner? Ji waktu diri waktu bingkai nak cibir kasu bobo, bena at agen awal. Johan lain len yon, purungen gis lawyer wala, nyuja len Johan len cer purungen am lawyer purien. No. Did it? Were you? Never happened. Musta am. Were you charged with any offence? Dah, two man lain len, ne lingen def. I was taken out to. Fajara Barracks on three different occasions. And all these three occasions, they will come and tell me that we are taking you for court martial. And in all occasions, we we'll just go and sit the whole day. Nothing will happen. Then we will be taken back to the prison. And I remember when it happened three times, I got really, really, really angry. And I told the officers that you have not even charged us. 
ci la wax ñi nga xamne ñoy liggeykat yoy ci kasso bi ne len yeen yeen ak ñu fi tek touma lu len ñu sax lan len def and you're talking about a court martial we've been there three times nothing has happened yeen nga wax meri atté ñu ci wali soldat ga yu mu ngi fa ñett yoon bo len bugge ñu wat nak pour guéné ma fi you come and shoot me but i'm not xam na da ngeen ma fétel da way du mag delu de ne ba kemba delu ci watu can you therefore tell this commission what led to your release from detention mun nga wax commission bi legi la na xewu ba ñu ñew bayi la nga nga am sa bopa there is a name i should have mentioned that has just abujen amna tour bu ma warona wax ku ñu wax abujen no the police office benen police la won they was detained with us bo xamne ñu ko jappon ak ñun and there was this special bond between the inspector general of police Abu Jeng and I. Amo na joko bu nekon suñ digante nak inspector general de police man ak Abu Jeng. We used to eat together. Ñun ño daan lekka ndor. So this day we were having lunch. Bis bi nak ñu doon añ. Then the officers came and informed me that Abu Jeng and I. Eh ci la ñi nga xamne ño fa liggey ñew wax ñu ne Abu Jeng ak man. Have been pardoned by President Yaya Jame. Ne President Yaya Jame ba la ñu chairman jamme eh chairman jamme jegal nañu and that we were free to go home ne legi mu neñu ñibbi so what made them take that decision li tax ñu jël dogal bobu dey mom xawma ko but as we were leaving way biñu dem we found babukar jata ci lañ dal di gis babukar jata I don't know what rank he had at the time but he was head of the army. Jamano bobu na xawma ban ma xama la yore won de way mo jité won soldat gi. So he had a contingent of soldiers with him. Mo ngi andon ak kuréri soldat yu anda mom. Would it be correct to say that he was a major? Na mu la wax ne major la won. He 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 was a major. Mo ne waaw major la won. But junior to me of course. Way ma ko fété won kaw nak. So he said to me sir. Ci la ma dal di ne sir. Boss name of your state house. Doctor, when you when you speak the No, I'm just saying saying I'm just saying what he said. I will now explain what he said. Sorry, one minute. Interpreters, when the witness speaks in Wolof, can you just interpret it in English, please? Thank you. Okay. So he said to me that the boss wanted him to take me to the state house. Ci la ma dal di ne ma boss bi day dafa bugama yobbu la state house. And I ask who is the boss? Mane ko kuy boss bi. Ne ma jame. Ya ya jame. Then then he said to me ya ya jame. So I said to him am I released or am I not released? Na ko ne ko man dañ may bayyi wala bayyi wuñ ma. No of course you have been released. So I said fine if I'm released I now determine where I go not you. I'm not going to the state house. Mo ne ko ah comme ka legi bayyi nañ ma man ma wara wax fan lay dem te dew ma state house. So he 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 consulted with state house. E legi nak mu joko ak state house. Then he came back to me. Mu delu su wat ci man. And he said doc. Mo ne ma doc. I will take you home. Dama la yobu nga ñibbi. And even there, I wasn't very confident, and I said no. Bobu sa olo ma won ci la kono ko dedit. If I stand outside the gates of this prison, suma tahawe ci bunti kasobi. Nothing more than three cars will drive past me. Lu lu e su nyeti moto na imaromba. I said to him, the first car, if that one misses me, the second one will say, ah, this is Doctor Njai. Ben na bo ham ne rau na ma benen moto ba na na ah kide Doctor Njai la. So I don't need you. Re sahla wo malen akbon. Then he came closer to me. He said, "We have to talk, sir. You are my boss. I have to tell you some things. This is my only opportunity." Chela dalde nyo nak dalde madai nema hara ma wahla yo usuma kilifanga. So I said, in that case, it will be just you and me and no escort. Bon nak sude lola man ma yo rekla don te do am kenen kujunyatel. So he took his car. For gunge nyo. Car keys from his driver. ci la dal di jeul chaabi moto bi nak ci loxo drive am bi and release this convoy to go dal di bayyi ñim andal ñep nañu dem and the two of us drove home ñun ñaar rek mu dal di ma dawal yobbu ma kër well on the way he told me a lot of things ba ñoo dem day ca yoon wa amna lu bari lu ma wax a lot of things that were happening yu bari yo xamne mo do he was not happy about te mom contanu ci won 
but could not do anything about it. But he cautioned me. He said to me, we have the NIH and we have informants of the NIA. We have even recruited mates into our program. And you will be followed wherever you go. For them. So be careful. So this is how you were released and taken home. Right. Right. Wow. Can you tell this commission what you did after your release? I took time about a month and then I said I have to get up and do something. Fortunately, I received a letter telling me that I had been redeployed to the Royal Victoria Hospital. Where did you receive the said letter from? It came from the personal management office. Uh, personal management office. And it read that they had received instructions from State House. That ne. Captain Malik Jai Captain no, Majo, Majo Malik Jai is redeployed to the Royal Victoria Hospital. And that they concur. So the letter was from an office in the Royal Victoria Hospital then? No. no, it came from the personal management office. PMO. There's in the letter, they said they were instructed by State House to inform me that I had been redeployed to the Royal Victoria Hospital. And, and, and that they concur with the instructions. Continue to tell the Commission what you did after you received the letter. Continue. I reported to the Chief Executive the hospital and showed him the letter. He said, ah, doc, this is your place. You know the hospital better than all of us. Are you going back to your department? I said, yes. I don't mind going back to my department. So that day, I reported to the surgical department. So that day, I reported to the surgical department. Then Dr. Ogba Selassi came to the surgical department. And he said to me, I had your back in the hospital. He said, let's go. You are not staying here. You are coming to ONG. <laughs> so I ended up in ONG. That's obstetrics and Gynecology. There I work was a registrar. Rose through the ranks, registrar, senior registrar. Head of department. And finally I became deputy chief medical director. I occupied that position for about four or five years. Then I was appointed chief medical director, chief medical director, which I held up to 2007. When one day Jame came to the hospital. Do you remember the month? November. November. I think it was November. Very November, Lawon. 2007. Do you remember what time he came? After working, after, after working hours. 
When he, when, he, when, he, when he got there, I was in there because I was home already. Bamfa but the duty officer called me and said, look, Dr. Njai, the president is here. Bamfa XFA, come on, you've been a better and you have to watch your turn now. Why not? I can't have no more for the Kadal Dima or name a Dr. Njai, President Bimunfi. So I said to him, you're the duty officer. You are now in charge. Receive him. So he did. They looked at some words and then he left. Then the following day, the chief of protocol called me and informed me that uh, the president was visiting the hospital at 4 o'clock and I should be there to receive him. Sorry, doctor. Could this have been in 2006 of November? Doctor, I'm not going to November 2006. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Thank you. Continue. Mm -hmm. so, so I went. I received him. And he told me he had a son in the accident and emergency unit, but he wanted to visit the hospital. I said, fine. So we started with the visit. We went through some words on the ground floor. And during this period, we, we discussed a lot of things. We exchanged a lot of things. And that was the first time that he said to me that he can cure HIV. And that uh, he wanted to come to the hospital to start treating HIV patients. Doctor, if we may make a point mm -hmm. on that issue you have just testified. Uh -huh. It is clear that he mentioned to you that he could cure HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you went on to say that he wanted to do it in the RVH. Yes. Wow. Can you tell us the conversation you had with him on that issue? I, I told him straight away that I didn't believe him. And that uh, he as president should concern himself with governing the state rather than curing HIV. He should leave that to us. We have a national program, and it's working very well. So leave that to us. And stay out of it. He said, "You don't have brainwash." <laughs> he said, "I was brainwashed by the tubabs, the white people." He said, "That was why I was saying that to him." But we continued talking, and I explained to him that uh, no, we. Kept, kept talking about what he could do, what he cannot do, and finally we got to the accident and emergency where his son, someone he called his son. Sorry, doctor, before we get to that point, why, as a medical practitioner, did you find it necessary to indicate to him that he cannot treat or cure HIV AIDS? Luta, you're going why when you settle alcohol, you munulo fetch HIV AIDS. Because then and now we still do not have a cure for HIV. Jamano. I was absolutely certain of what I was saying. Jamano Boba, Befin Toluni Tay, Ben Tay Amun Lo Hamne, Dinamuna fetch HIV AIDS, Ben Weir, Luma or Lakodon Wahnon. What we could do was control the disease. And up to today, worldwide, there is only one case that's supposed to have been cured.
And further investigation of that case has revealed that the condition that that person had and the way he was treated was what rendered him virus free. But he wasn't killed. So there's no cure for HIV. HIV is Whether it's traditional medicine, conventional medicine, whatever type of medicine, HIV has been with us since it came in, and maybe one day we'll get an answer. HIV, well, we still don't have one. HIV, we still have one. HIV, we still have one. Dr. Njai, did you explain this to Yaya Jame then? Dr. Njai, ndah, wanga lulu Yaya Jame chi watu bubu. In fact, I tried to get a TV footage, and I couldn't. Ndah, hamsa, jiem na, pur am, no ham ne amon neng kochi. And I appealed to the TRRC during my interviews to make an attempt to get that footage. Te mange sa kuti RRC. Nenja sen kemta lai katan pur jot interview bubu made fon ki telebi. I was made to understand that the system that was used at that time is not compatible with the digitized system that the GRTS is using now. Jem na pur amko beson na wai linjma wah moi. Lanjan jefo jamano boba munu nko jefo fimne kani chi GRTS. On that day, when he was leaving the hospital, he called the media team for a press conference. The team that goes along with him. There was GRTS and, 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 and some representatives of Ak some print media. So you are telling this commission that this whole conversation that you had with Yaya Jame was televised. It was televised. Uh, everybody saw it. And that even though you had explained to him, and that even though you had explained to him that he could not cure the disease, he still insisted on continuing the said program he later on set up. Mul degeral ne mom dal da dina kuntine dugal bopam chimbir faj mum. No, I did not say that. What I said was he insisted that he knows how to cure HIV. Mom dal da for degero ne mom hamna niyo faje HIV. Not that he was going to start anything. He wanted to come and do this in the hospital. And I told him that I would rather be fired than let him come into the hospital and expose us to that. And I told him that the law, the, the, the act that established the hospital has defined who can practice medicine. Te wahana kone ko lua binga hamne mo tahawal lopitan bi leral na nang kan mo wara fudge. Therefore, doctor, can you tell this commission what happened next after you refused him access to practice this said treatment in the hospital? Legi wahnyo binko wahe lulu ne yen dolen dugachi fudge mum mum lana lana kewon gana ululu. At the press conference, right there at the gate of the. Accident and emergency. His opening statement was. Bimo wa akwe chaskati hibari. Chabunte lopetan bafufu limwa moi. I've been telling Dr. Njai. Wahana Dr. Njai de. That I can cure AIDS. Ne muna fudge AIDS. He's so brainwashed he doesn't want to believe me. Why mo amden jaha se helam benga ham ne muna magumsa. That was his opening statement. Lolo le ube kadom. So he said, now I want you to interview us. Legi mana ko legi dem bu gengen latnyo. And the first question that was thrown at me was on his ability to do traditional medicine. And I said to them, look, let's get one thing straight. I studied medicine. 
Janga na mi rifaj. From a proper medical school. Te fima ko jange jenganiela. Te amna firnde. Show. Purone. That I can practice medicine. Ne, muna faj. But he doesn't. Why mom amu kade? If you're going to ask me about traditional medicine, which I do not know about, so malaje chimeri faji chosa ante lulu how much dara? It wouldn't be fair to me. Ah, but not the whole thing. Since he's the one claiming that he can cure AIDS, come come on more. Wah ne muna faji AIDS. Ask him the questions. Like when calling in malaje bullet makolaje man. So just to go a step back. Rudelu two three eksa ganau. You had started mentioning that he visited a so-called son in the A and E. Yeah. Can you tell this commission what happened during that said visit? When we got to the A and E, I got informed by the staff who the boy was, why he was admitted. So, he told me something completely different. Sorry, can you tell us who you're referring to? I'm referring to Yaya Jame. Yaya Jame Lawa. He said to me, I hope you'll understand the language, because I want to use this language. He said to me, this boy, boy B, was attacked by the night firefighters. So I said, what exactly do you mean by that? I'm a doctor. I'm not 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 a doctor. Sorry, doctor. So are you trying to tell us he was again referring to is it the jinnies or the demons or the witches, etc.? Doctor, mungi meli dal yang yowa ne mom limba no no mungi dem chi bori setan e yek jinn e yek domai kulu meli lolo. But yeah, Jami and I also had a personal relationship. Yeah, Jami ak man nak dafu am joko bo ham ne mungi suma digante ak mom. Which reflected our in our relationship throughout. I always saw him as a junior officer. And an officer that needed to be guided. Because he did not have proper military training. He, he was brought into the, the, the army. When, when the gendarmerie was dissolved. And he found it difficult to settle in. And I knew him before. So I felt it was my obligation to help him settle down. The boys used to bully him. And I used to tell the boys that he should be given a chance. Like anytime I found him on extra duty, I will call the adjutant to remove him from extra duty. Let him go home. Because he was on duty last week, so he cannot be on duty again this week. So we, had, we, had a, we had a relationship. And we had this thing that is a tradition in this country between the Serers and the Jolas. The Amonna Kale wante bu nekon sima digante ek mom wui kal digante Jola ak Serer. Like he would say to me, fi Jola ya fi president. And I would say to him, Jola wifi neka president de nyun Serer di nyoko elect. And he usually tells me, well, you have a Jola president. And I'll tell him. This Jola president has been created by the series. So, doctor, can you continue to tell us what he then did next after he said the boy was possessed? Then, doctor, continue. Well, well, you know, I know that the boy was possessed. He called, he was so excited, he called his boys to bring his 
medicines. She had all the honor I boy Sami put in the Kogarabami. Can you tell this commission who you are referring to as his boys? The soldiers, the personal protection officers, the the guards. Soldari, Nikodon Garde, Nikodon R. The aides. I nigga ham no nyokodon topachiganao. They all came in with everybody had a briefcase for the soldiers. And he said he was going to treat everybody. Chilla ne da fa fat nip in the A and E. So I reminded him, said, remember you are the president, you cannot go against the law, you cannot treat anybody here without consent, without recognition by the medical and dental council. So like I told you, just forget about this business. Leave it to us. He said, anyway, I'm going to pray for my son. I said, okay. He in his usual manner, he brought out his, his Quran. And over the boy, and a lot of incantations, and then managed to grab a, a briefcase where he pulled a bottle and poured some water over over the chap. So I again went back to him. I said, Echi, you're going too far. You've done enough. Let's, let's just do that. Wow, and I'm full so he said, okay, let's go. So when we left, that was when we had the interview. Doctor, can you tell us why you think Yai Jami believed that he could cure people of illnesses? Dr. Lutang, Yai Jami, Luta, Mugomne, Mom, Muna, Fajnini. Well, within the circle of our cal business, I hope I'm making myself clear, this, this Jola Serir business. He once said to me, Mansuma Mam Yifaj Katlan, that is his grandparents were traditional healers. And I said to him, you had only one who could fix bones. So you cannot tell me more about when this is HIV, you cannot do this one. So he believed that um, he believed that he, he got it traditionally from his family. And on the day that he officially declared his ability to to cure HIV, he did declare that he had a mandate. And when I asked him later, where did you get your mandate from? He said to me, God. Thank you. <laughs> we may take a break at this point, Mr. Chair, and we'll continue after our usual 30 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Boys, whatever happened to them? Sorry, sorry, sorry. The boys who were really um, uh, making, I mean, laughing at him, when you tried to intervene and uh, telling them, uh, go easy on this guy coming from uh, gendarme to the army, what did anything happen to those boys? That's a very interesting. Nikodon di sonal, because of extra duties, bimjogi gendarme army, feka dal dalagut. Yes. Lieutenant Baro. Lieutenant Baro. He was the adjutant. Monekon adjutant. When Jami joined us and Yundum. Be Jami di nyo feka si Yundum. They did not get on well at all. Nyom dal ne ho unyon dara dara dara. I don't know what was wrong, but they did not get on well. How malala de why ne ho unyon? And Baro had power over him. Baro amon na dole si kawam. And we'll put him on extra duties anytime he wants. Tesa yun e karek nudugal ko si ligay bo hamne sa habu upala. 
There was a day that he came to the mess. I mean, Yaya Jame came to the mess. And told me that Baro was making his life very difficult. He was always on extra duties. I had to speak to Baro. And, and, and the way the program comes out, when the adjutant prepares it, it comes out as the commander's program. So everybody obeys it. So if he puts you on extra duty, the commander has put you on extra duty. Actually, So we used to use rank on barrel. We, 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 we were too senior to Baro. When he was a lieutenant, we were majors. So we could say to him, stop this, don't do it again. And we did that, just to bring peace. We did that. I did that. And I knew Pasala Jain. Who was in the gendarmerie with him. And both came back. I think Pasala proceeded to the police thereafter. But Pasala used to tell us. He's a difficult person, but take care of him. Thank you very much, Dr. Njai. We will take a coffee break and come back at. Uh,